What's up, guys? My name's Stu, and today we're going to be talking about Star Trek Online's reputation system. Star Trek Online's reputation system has a lot of really great gear and reputation traits that can be locked from inside it. However, some reputations have better rewards than others, and considering how long it takes to grind the reputations, especially if you're doing them for the first time, it might be a good idea to know where you want to focus your efforts. So, in this video, I'm going to be going over each reputation and pointing out the better rewards in each one. Now, eventually you're going to want to get all of these to tier 6 at some point. At that point, each reputation offers a free fleet ship module and retrain token, plus improved versions of their reputation traits, and small bonus damage buffs to the weapons in that reputation. But like I said, the reputations are quite a grind, so you're probably going to want an idea of which specific gear you want out of the reputations. That way you know where to focus your efforts initially. I'll start with the Discovery reputation because it's at the top of the menu. Upon completing Tier 1, you'll gain access to the Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo. This is a powerful torpedo made even better by its set bonuses. Definitely something I would consider a must-have. In fact, if you also watch my build videos, you'll see that this torpedo is on quite a few of them. There's a reason for that, this torpedo is just that good. Tier 1 also grants you a personal ground trait called Tyler's Memories. This will give you a bonus damage buff to your ground weapons depending on the distance to your target, so this could be useful if you're running a more weapons-based ground build. At Tier 2, you'll unlock the Non-Baryonic Matter Deflector, which is part of the Stamets Tilly Field Modification set. This is a very tank-focused set, so if you're interested in gaining a measure of survival, or if you're wanting to set up a full-blown tank build, you're probably going to want this deflector. Also at Tier 2 is the Phaser Dual Heavy Beam Bank. Like the Dark Matter Torpedo, this is a very powerful weapon on its own and is only made better by its set bonuses. This is definitely going to be a must-have if you like phaser builds. Tier 3 doesn't have any must-haves, but there are a few things that could still be useful for you at this level. Landry's Tenacity is a ground reputation trait. Whenever you score a critical hit, it'll cleanse you of a debuff. This could be useful for solo play if you're looking to fill a slot while you're still trying to unlock some of the other reputation traits. Each reputation also has its own dilithium store. Most of these items aren't really that great, but at Tier 3, the Discovery reputation unlocks the support engineering consoles, in which the Bellum RCS Accelerator is included. If you're flying a ship with a really bad turn rate, an RCS Accelerator is a really good way of improving that turn rate. I don't normally use them because I'm pretty used to flying large cruisers, and I'd rather have something there that's going to improve my DPS more. But if you really think you need an RCS Accelerator, use a Bellum RCS. These are the best option because they will also buff your crit chance. I know there are a number of people who still say that the Conductive RCS from the Crafted menu is better, but those people are wrong. The last thing I'll go over in Tier 3 is the Mind Meld Device. This is a melee weapon for the ground that's actually really interesting. It has a unique charge attack that helps mitigate some of the range issues with melee weapons. So if you like melee builds, this could be really useful. In the fourth tier, first is a personal space reputation trait called Tyler's Duality. It increases your critical chance based on your ship's hull capacity. Critical chance is a very important stat for damage builds, so this is a very useful reputation trait. The other reputation trait unlocked in tier 4 is Landry's Loyalty. It's basically the space version of Landry's Tenacity. It'll cleanse a debuff from you when you score a critical hit. Like with the ground version, it's not a must-have, but it's a good seat filler. Tier 4 also has some really useful kit modules. Mud's Time Device is really useful for survival, and for lowering the cooldowns of your other kit modules, and Gravity Containment Unit is a big cone-shaped pull attack, which deals a surprising amount of damage. Both of these are universal kit modules, so you can use them on any character, no matter their career. Moving on to Tier 5, first we have Burnham CQC Armor. This is arguably the best ground armor in the game, largely because of its impressive buffs to crit chance and crit severity, both of which are stat buffs you don't often see on armor. It also has a small buff to run speed, which can be pretty nice too. Tier 5 also offers an environmental suit version of this armor, for which there's no argument to be had. This is definitely the best environmental suit in the game, stats-wise at least. I would definitely call these two must-haves. They've been part of the ground meta for a while now. Also unlocked at Tier 5 is Lorca's Custom Fire Controls, which is a tactical console that, if you've been here before, you've probably seen a lot of. Definitely a must-have for any weapons-based DPS build, thanks to its impressive crit chance buff, as well as its buff to shield penetration and weapons power. This is the third piece in the Lorca's Ambition set, along with the Dark Matter Torpedo and the Dual Heavy Beam Bank. The two-piece bonus gives a stacking crit severity buff, which is nice for your damage output, which is why I often include the Dark Matter Torpedo and the console on a lot of my builds. The three-piece allows you to launch an extra torpedo at a target, so again, that's more damage output. Though because the Dual Heavy Beam Bank is a phaser, you're probably only going to ever have that three-piece on a phaser build. Actually, that's not totally true, because Tier 6 unlocks a Disruptor version of it. So if you like Disruptor builds, you're going to want to get this reputation up to Tier 6. Ugh, I'm an idiot. I talked about the Deflector, but forgot to talk about the rest of the set. The Warp Core and Shield are unlocked at Tiers 4 and 5 respectively. Like I said, the Tilly set is really well suited for tank builds, though not exclusively. 
you'll definitely want the Shield Deflector and Warp Core for a tank build, because then you'll get 3-piece bonus Mycelial Lightning, which is great for generating aggro, which is really important for a tank build. If you're not wanting to do a true tank build but want something with more survivability, then I would just go with the 2-piece, that being the Shield and the Warp Core. The 2-piece bonus just gives you a nice buff to hull regeneration, though even if you're running a pure damage build, you're going to want the Shield from this set, because that'll give your weapons a damage buff against enemy shields. I wouldn't worry about the Impulse Engine from this set, which unlocks at Tier 3. The 4-piece set is okay, but I wouldn't call it a must-have, and personally, I would rather have the speed buff from the competitive engine, but more on that later. Next is the Task Force Omega Reputation. This is the oldest reputation in the game. In fact, it's so old it actually predates the reputation system, meaning a lot of this stuff used to be rewarded through different means. And while a lot of the stuff in this reputation may be really old, some of it is still quite useful. Tier 1 includes a useful ground reputation trait, Omega Weapon Proficiency. This gives a bonus damage buff to energy weapon and melee damage, so this can be really useful for more weapons-based ground builds or for melee builds. Also in Tier 1 is the Assimilated Universal Console, aka the Assimilated Module. This console is really nice for its crit chance and crit severity buffs, and its weapons power buff isn't bad to have either. This console also has a set bonus with the Kinetic Cutting Beam, which has a chance to significantly lower your weapons power cost. More on the Kinetic Cutting Beam in a bit. The Assimilated Console is a really good thing to have on a lot of DPS builds especially energy weapon builds because of the power buff and its two-piece. Tier 2 also has a couple useful things, the first being a space reputation trait called Omega Kinetic Shearing. This will add a damage over time effect to your projectile weapons and is really good for a torpedo build. The other is the Kinetic Cutting Beam. This is a very unique energy weapon because not only does it deal kinetic damage, but it also has a 360 degree firing arc, though it also isn't affected by weapons firing modes like Beam Overload or Fire at Will. Despite its 360 arc, this weapon actually isn't considered an omnidirectional beam so you'll be able to pair this with two actual Omni Beams. And like I said, it has that two-piece bonus with the assimilated module, so if you like energy weapon builds, particularly beam overload builds, I would definitely want this. And that's about it for the must-haves in this reputation. Like I said, there's some good stuff in here, but a lot of it has been rendered obsolete. The ground sets, for example, they were originally designed to fight against the Borg, so they have abilities that let you remodulate your weapons quicker. However, all that's kind of redundant in comparison to a TR-116, or any other ranged weapon that deals physical damage. The only other thing I would say is kind of useful is in Tier 3, and that's the Assimilated Engine. This engine gives a pretty nice buff to sector space speed, so it can be really valuable during two of the Galaxy runs. And with that, we're going to move on to the next reputation, the Nukara Strike Force. This one's pretty bare bones as well in terms of useful gear, but at Tier 2 you do gain access to the Nukara Web Mine Launcher. These mines have some additional physical damage added to them, which makes them good for EPG builds, because in space, physical damage is a form of exotic damage. Also good for EPG, or really any other science-heavy builds, in Tier 4 is a space reputation trait called Auxiliary Power Configuration Offense. This gives you a bonus damage buff based off your auxiliary power levels. Science builds are very dependent on auxiliary power, so you're likely going to have that maxed out, so you may as well get a bonus damage buff along with it. Tier 4 also has the Hyper Dual Refracting Tetrion Beam Bank. Hardly a meta piece of gear, but that's largely because it's a Tetrion weapon. But if you have a Tetrion build, this could be worth adding. Tier 6 also unlocks an anti-proton version of this weapon, though really if you want refracting anti-proton beams, just get a bunch of Bawul beams. They're much better. I know they're also more expensive, but if you're running anti-proton, you should know that you're going to want the Bawul Lobi set, which already isn't cheap. And that about covers it for what's useful in the Nukara reputation, so let's move on to the new Romulus reputation. Tier 1 offers the ground reputation trait Lethality, which is a nice buff to crit chance and therefore a useful trait to have. Crit Chance is going to be the theme for a little bit, because Tier 1 also unlocks a console called Zero Point Energy Conduit, which also has a nice Crit Chance buff. I wouldn't call this a meta console because there are some better options, but most of those options are from the Lobi store, so this makes a great budget alternative. Tier 2 gives access to Precision, which is a reputation trait that is basically just the space version of Lethality, so it's more Crit Chance for your ship build, which is always good. And the last thing worth pointing out in this reputation, in Tier 3, the Advanced Romulan Prototype Impulse Engine. This is the only impulse engine that I know of that actually gives a buff to one of your offensive stats. This one giving a buff to weapon amplification, which is your crit severity skill. I know some people don't like the speed buff from the competitive engine. It can be rather jarring to use at times. So this is a good alternative because of that crit severity buff. The next reputation is the Dyson Joint Command Rep. There's only three items in this list that piqued my interest and none of them are above tier two, so you're not gonna have to put much effort into this one. Tiers one and two give access to deadly aim and advanced targeting systems respectively both of which are reputation traits that buff your critical severity. The first one is the ground version, the other is the space version. Tier 2 also offers the Gravimetric Photon Torpedo. This is a must-have for EPG builds. It's a very powerful photon torpedo that creates gravimetric rifts when it explodes. Just be careful because you can kill yourself with those rifts. 
The 8472 Counter Command Reputation also has a really interesting torpedo in it. Unlocked at Tier 2, the Enhanced Biomolecular Photon Torpedo. This is a very powerful torpedo. Honestly, I think the only reason it's not considered the best torpedo in the game is because the Dark Matter Torpedo has better set bonuses. This is definitely a must-have if you like torpedo builds. If you're running an energy weapon build, you're probably better off with the Dark Matter Torpedo, but even on an energy weapon build, this thing can still do some very impressive damage. Tier 3 also has something useful for a torpedo build. Here you'll gain access to biomolecular projectile weapons, which will unlock in this Reputation's Dilithium store. This will grant access to biomolecular photon mines. They're not as powerful as the Enhanced Biomolecular Photon Torpedo, but they still pack a really nice punch, and I really like using these because they can be re-engineered for the Radius mod. Radius increases the size of the AoE of the mine's explosion. I usually like to have at least one mine with Radius on it if I'm using a torpedo build. It can be nice for helping to clear out mobs of smaller ships. And Tier 4 of the 8472 rep will unlock the Heavy Biomolecular Turret. This is a turret that deals higher damage in exchange for a lower firing rate than a standard turret. Not exactly meta, but they'd be good for a budget cannon build. One of the nice things about these is that they come in a variety of damage types. At Tier 4 you get the Phaser and Disruptor versions, and at Tier 6 you get a Plasma and Tetrion version. The Delta Alliance reputation has a couple more goodies if you like torpedo builds. At Tier 2 you gain access to the Neutronic Torpedo, which is a powerful torpedo thanks to its radiation damage proc. Not as powerful as the Dark Matter or the Enhanced Biomolecular Torpedoes, but this is still a really good addition to a full-blown torpedo build or an EPG build. Radiation damage is a form of exotic damage, so these pair well with science builds as well. Same goes with this next unlock at Tier 3, Thoron Infused Quantum Projectiles, which is an unlock for this Reputation's Dilithium store. This will allow you to buy Thoron Infused Quantum Mines, and like the previous one, they go really well with a torpedo build or an EPG build thanks to their radiation proc. The Iconian Resistance Reputation also doesn't have much that's really useful in the current state of the game, but it does have two reputation traits that could be useful. Tier 1 gives you access to Personal Energy Amplifier, which is a ground reputation trait that gives you a bonus damage buff to your kit modules. Kit modules tend to be very powerful, so if you're using a build that is more focused on your kit modules, this will be very helpful. Tier 2 unlocks a Space Reputation trait that's really good for science builds, Particle Generator Amplifier. This trait gives a bonus damage buff to all your exotic damage. EPG builds are all about exotic damage, so if you like those, you're gonna want this. Next one is the Terran Task Force Reputation, and this one's still got some pretty good stuff in it. Tier 1 unlocks a ground reputation trait called Close Quarter Combatant. This is really good for melee builds because it buffs your melee damage and your run speed. Also at Tier 1 is a console called Ferrofluidic Hydraulic Assembly. This is a must-have for torpedo builds because it reduces the shared cooldown of your torpedoes, meaning you'll be able to fire your different torpedoes more rapidly. Tier 2 has some more stuff good for torpedo builds. First is a space reputation trait called Torpedo Pre-Fire Sequence. This gives a damage buff to your torpedoes and increases the flight speed of your destructible torpedoes. If you're using the Starship trait Rapid Emitting Armaments off the legendary Dideradex, this reputation trait will also affect the torpedoes made from that Starship trait, meaning those heavy plasmas will move that much quicker. Also at Tier 2 is the Terran Task Force Torpedo. This could be really useful for a budget torpedo build. Most of the standard options for a torpedo build are from the reputation system, but one of them isn't, the Delphic Torpedo, that comes from the Lobi store. So if you don't feel like spending the money to earn Lobi, but still want a good torpedo build, this is a good budget alternative. It has a strong radiation proc that'll add more damage, and it has a two-piece bonus from the Ferrofluidic Assembly that'll add a little bit more torpedo damage. Skipping ahead to Tier 4, this is where you unlock the Terran Task Force Disruptors. These come in a beam array and a dual heavy cannon. The cannon is considered to be one of the most powerful energy weapons in the game. The beam array is also really good, though frankly it would be better if it were a dual beam bank. But if you like Disruptor builds, you are definitely going to want at least one of these. Maybe even both, because you can actually use both on the same build. Though if you prefer Phaser as a damage type, don't worry, you're covered there too, because Tier 6 unlocks a Phaser version of these weapons. Again, if you like Phaser builds, definitely a must-have. Now onto the Temporal Defense Initiative reputation. This one may have some more good stuff if you like science builds. Though before I get to that, the first thing I'm going to talk about is a ground reputation trait, called Miniaturized Chrono Capacitor, which helps reduce the cooldown of your kit modules. Now, the thing that helps out with science builds is the Temporal Defense Initiative set. The Deflector is unlocked at Tier 2, the Engine at Tier 3, the Warp Core at Tier 4, and the Shield at Tier 5. The current meta for EPG builds uses most of the Revolutionary set. However, the Revolutionary set was an event reward, so if you missed out on that, you're probably not going to have another chance to get it until it shows up in Mud's Market. And knowing Mud's Market, it'll be way more expensive than it's worth. So if you don't have the Revolutionary set but want to build a science build, I would go with this as an alternative. The Lucari Restoration Initiative has some good stuff if you like Polaron or Plasma builds, Tier 1 unlocks a console called the Piezo Electric Focuser, a universal console that buffs plasma and polaron damage and is a good option for a budget build for either of those two damage types. 
Tier 4 unlocks the advanced piezo polaron weapons, there's a version in beam array, and one in dual cannons. These can be pretty powerful because of their technical overload ability, which deals a decent amount of electrical damage to a target whenever you use a certain firing mode. For the dual cannon, it's rapid fire and surgical strikes, and for the beam array, it's beam overload or surgical strikes. But if polaron really isn't your jam, Tier 6 unlocks a plasma version of these weapons. Now onto the competitive war games reputation. This one is the biggest pain in the butt to get gear for because, well, no one really plays these TFOs. Not unless they're up for the universal endeavor. But if you do manage to get yourself enough war game stratagems, these are some items you might want to save up for. Though I would only consider one of these a must have. First up is the modulating mine launcher from tier two. This is a unique mine launcher whose mines get more powerful the longer they sit out after they've been deployed. This is another weapon that's really valuable for torpedo builds. Tier three has two more items worth looking at. First is the Prevailing Innervated Impulse Engine. This is the one thing out of this reputation I would call a must-have. Whenever you activate a Firing Mode ability, this engine will trigger a massive buff to speed and turn rate, making it very good for speed and maneuverability. So much so that it's pretty much standard on most of my builds. Now, there are two other versions of this engine as well in the reputation. The Prevailing Bolstered Engine, which triggers off of Control and Drain abilities, which might actually be better for a science build, and the Prevailing Fortified Engine, which only activates off of Shield and Hull Heals which I guess this would be useful if you are using heals, but honestly, I'm not a fan. Though I guess that's just because I'm one of those min-maxing weirdos that tries to put as much damage output on my ship as possible. Which of these three is going to be best is really going to be up to you, and that's assuming you even like the speed buff, which some people don't. In which case, I already recommended the Romulan engine earlier. But overall, I would recommend the prevailing Innervated engine. The last item in this reputation worth looking at is also in Tier 3, the Experimental Flak Artillery. This is an experimental weapon, the only one in the reputation. This isn't the most powerful experimental weapon in the game, but it is one of the few that's available through free-to-play means. The only other one is the experimental hyper-excited ion stream projector that comes standard with most escorts. And that thing sucks. There are some better experimental weapons that you can get unlocked on your whole account, like the one off the Rising Corvette, which you can find in Mud's Market. That one has been the meta choice for quite a while now, and honestly, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Another good option is the one off the Adamant, which is a sea store ship, so it's a bit more reasonably priced. But if you want to stay strictly free to play, the Experimental Flak Artillery is your best option. Now on to the final reputation, the Gamma Task Force. Starting off in Tier 1 is a ground reputation trait called Strength of Body. This will give you a kit performance buff anytime you use a Captain's ability. Kit performance is a very important ground skill because it determines the strength of your kit modules. So this will be really useful on your ground builds. There are two more reputation traits at Tier 3 and Tier 4, Magnified Armaments and Magnified Firepower. The first is a ground trait that gives a buff to all damage, and the other is the space version which gives a buff to all weapons damage, both of which are rather useful. In fact, you've probably seen the space one used on a lot of my builds. The last thing to cover here is the Gamma Team Synergies set. You get the Warp Core at Tier 1, the Deflector at Tier 3, the Impulse Engine at Tier 4, and the Shield at Tier 5. This is a unique set that not only applies buffs to yourself, but also applies those same buffs to the rest of your team. So this is really useful for a support build. If you prefer a playstyle that involves going around buffing other players, this is the set to use. So yeah, those are the more useful items that can be found in Star Trek Online's reputation system. Hopefully this can be useful for you in figuring out where you want to focus your reputation grind. If you guys have any questions about the reputation system, or you think I missed something inside there, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel and become a member, hit the join button. Either way, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.